Okay. Shall we start our session today? Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, my name is Mikko Majander, and on the behalf of uh, Kalevi Sorsa Foundation, I wish you all welcome to our seminar on energy policy and its future in Germany, in Denmark, in Finland. Well, I guess that this kind of a theme is in many ways at the core of any planning everywhere at the moment. And surely it also has a joint European character as well. This seminar is organized together with our colleagues in Brussels. Our think tank, Kalevi Sosa Foundation, is a member of Foundation for European Progressive Studies, FEPS. And in the past years, we have arranged together a series of high-profile conferences with prominent international speakers and guests. Um, I don't know many, how many in a row, but on a yearly basis in any case. For example, last December, our joint seminar on full employment policy with two distinguished American professors, James Galbraith and Randall Ray, as keynote speakers, it drew a very, very large audience and a good media coverage. And a conference on religion, society and politics a li little earlier in the autumn was no less interesting. It's my pleasure to thank FEPS for this good cooperation and I'm pleased to, pleased to give the floor now to Charlotte Billingham, who works at the FEPS offices in Brussels as an executive advisor. Please, Charlotte. Thank you very much, Miko, and thank you to the Kale Visosa Foundation for hosting this, and also to the rest of the team, to Hildo and Anti, for all the help that they've given. Um, <laughs> when I told my colleagues that I was coming this time, they were all quite jealous because usually when we do things with the Kali Visosa Foundation, it's in the middle of winter. And now uh, I get the lucky opportunity to be here today when it's much nicer weather than in Brussels. So <laughs> I'm very happy. Um, just a bit about FEPS, basically with a progressive European think tank. We aim to be um, a platform to bring together progressive actors and partners in synergy with an ambition to foster a real European space for debate. We work in close collaboration with social democratic organizations and parties, in particular national foundations and think tanks such as the Kale Visosa, um, to discuss different, um, different aspects. Our main uh, working program can be covered over four main pillars. So this is Next Left and the Renewal of Social Democracy, European Society, which includes gender, democracy and diversity, sustainable economy and global solidarities. Um, but today we're talking about energy. Um, our energy project that we've been doing started um, this year. We're going to have, it's got three different elements. So one of them is holding round tables such as this with our partners around Europe on different issues, often with a European and a national um, perspective in the debate. We're also doing a two-year research project which will look largely at um, the grid infrastructure interconnection and cut targets 2030. We've also established a focus group in Brussels with different actors from um, different sectors, so our main partners such as the trade unions and um, political representatives, but also from energy uh, companies and different associations and representatives. So um, it's very nice to see that these, all these different elements are uh, combined to, to really enhance the debate. Um, the reason why FEPS wanted to do this project is because basically the EU is founded on pooling resources together. When the coal, coal and steel community was created, it was for this reason. This is still as relevant today as it was back then. And I think we really need to address the long-term policies and look at the different shared commitments that we need to, to make together. Without doubt, the certainty of energy policy depends on political will. Although governments are dependent on the business support to succeed in their policies. Um, currently, we face a trilemma concerning our energy supply. Uh, we want to reduce political risk. We're relying on imported energy. Um, we want to ensure energy prices remain stable and affordable and introduce more renewable and safer energy production and also in the efforts to fight climate change. I think these are three main challenges, so we're looking at 
energy security, in terms of health and safety, and for political reasons. We're looking at social equity, looking at the pricing, distribution, access that should be equal for all citizens across Europe, and also the equality of energy cost should not be, um, well, energy should not be a cause of poverty in the EU today. And uh, we're looking at mitigation measures, so preventing against uh, global warming in the long run. Um, I'd be very interested to look at the case studies that we're looking at today from Germany and Denmark. Um, there's a lot of things happening in this energy revolution. I'm sure that our presen presenters can give us a lot, of, um, a lot of information of what's happening there and what we can learn from that within Europe. Um, generally, I think um, in terms of energy for a more progressive approach, it concerns three elements, which is cooperation, investment to enhance coordination, the research and training. Um, this goes in terms of research. For example, 80% of research on energy policy is carried out by private companies. This also goes together with research in digital infrastructure because smart grids will depend on this infrastructure. Um, and of course, social dialogue. We need to think of the consumers and also um, integrating the energy market so that it's a level playing field for, for renewables as well as fossil fuel companies. Um, Ideally, in the end, we're looking to achieve an energy community that would encompass all economic, social, and political sh and strategic aspects. Um, some people talk of an energy, a European energy community, but I'm not sure how realistic this would be uh, in the present political climate in Europe. Nevertheless, the cost of a non-Europe in energy policy, I think, would be a huge loss, and it would take off the added value of the EU. Um, the, I think the two main principles for, for European um, energy cooperation, uh, energy, sorry, two main principles for European um, energy policy, which are solidarity and cooperation. And I don't know if anybody saw the front of The Economist magazine um, this week, which was talking about the EU sleepwalking through the Eurozone. I think this also applies to the energy policy, are we going to sleepwalk around the effects of CO2 emissions or are we going to have a true energy revolution at European level? Thank you very much. Thank you, Charlotte. Uh, I'm already looking forward for the coming events to go with FEPS and plans for the dark season next autumn are already underway, under preparation, but uh, I think this new uh, arrangement that we try to split up, that we have one in a spring term and, and one maybe in the fall is maybe a, a good, good uh, way to go forward. Although uh, this late in, in, in May or in June, if the weather is this nice, it locks uh, our public off into the, to the parks and so on, but I'm pleased that so many of you have taken your time and come here today. So let us now concentrate on, on, on uh, our theme of the day. Energy policy certainly is a field that cannot be structured on a short-term basis by keeping eye only on the next elections or a term in a governing offices. Decisions and investments which are often of huge magnitude those decisions made today carry consequences for decades, decades at least, or maybe more accurately is to say for much longer times, when, for example, the challenges of climate change are brought into picture, or in the question of nuclear waste, the time span is actually indefinite from our human perspective. I think these aspects of energy policy, they introduce the need of both political consensus as well as continuity. And I think uh, this is something that our present Finnish government currently aims to build with the opposition parties, a new nat national strategy, how to face the energy production in a time span, let's say, to a 2050. I've heard that to, right today there has been some roadmaps 
drafts uh, brought to the public, and I think this debate is is lively and come, it will come, come become more important in, in, in coming weeks and months. So I think this is a very fortunate time to take a look uh, in our seminar what is done elsewhere, especially in Germany and as well in, in, in Denmark. To my understanding, in Finnish debate, uh, references to Germany or Germany's Energiewende is, is mainly understood only or is limited to kind of a panic reaction to Fukushima catastrophe. But uh, going a bit deeper into the, into the question, we can understand that what a profound long-term policy actually, policy orientation actually is taking, taking place. Is it manageable? Can the Germans afford it? Or if the Germans can afford, how can the other poor countries uh, afford it? I think these are good issues to tackle today. Our first speaker is Dr. Petri Hakkarainen, who is, uh, who is a historian by education and has made a career in Finnish foreign service, especially in Germany, but currently he works as a senior fellow at Potsdam Institute for Advanced Sustainability Studies, concentrating especially on European energy policies. Kalevi Sorsa Foundation has just published his working paper on German Energiewende, and I do dare recommend it as an extremely accessible introduction to, the, to this question for somebody who is not an expert. I think it's a good logical and well-argued introductions, at least for me, myself. Um, copies of it are available here in print in, 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 uh, on the table there in the back, and of course it can be downloaded also from our website. So I think Petri surely is the right person to give us the story so far. Please. <laughs> 